Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, Steve here with the CB Racing Channel. Um, I wanted to uh, first off say thank you uh, to all you viewers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for liking these videos. Um, this morning, <clears throat> I want to do just a brief uh, uh, history of the channel. Um, and then the direction that we hope to uh, be heading in um, in the future. So <laughs> the name uh, CB Racing um, 387, okay, so CB uh, stands for Cochlin Brothers, um, myself and my brother Jeff. Um, Years ago, we uh, we traveled around uh, bracket racing uh, two little 600 sport bikes. Um, I had a uh, ZX6R, and my brother, my little brother Jeff, had a uh, uh, CBR 600 um, F2. So uh, we traveled around to a lot of bracket races. Um, So that's where the CB came from, Cochlin Brothers Racing. Um, it was kind of funny because uh, we noticed that on his bike it said CBR. And you all know that's a Honda thing, but it was like, wow, that's Cochlin Brothers Racing. That was pretty cool. So we started using that. Um, we got, um, after I won, um, it was in 2000, I won a... Um, in Ohio, which is where I'm from originally. I live in North Carolina now, but um, I won um, a big race at uh, Norwalk, Ohio, which is now called Summit Motorsports Park. Um, <clears throat> it was a uh, local dealership put on a race called the Street Bike Nationals every year. And uh, my friend uh, Perry up there with Perry Power Racing, has won a handful of those races as well, but I've only got one, and it was a uh, a class win, and I actually uh, runnered up in the overall that year against uh, Rick McWaters. Um, some of you may know who he is. He raced. Uh, he was on his uh, Harley, his Terry Reed prepped Harley. Um, at that race and he won the overall got the thousand dollars and the girls and everything and I got a trophy for winning the Suzuki class I just had to be racing the Katana at the time <laughs> it was it was still a great day um, so the following year we were at that race and um, I had bought upgraded to that ZX6R from that old Katana and uh, Rick was riding uh, that was a Friday night before I had a test and tune and a gambler's race, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, Rick was riding, uh, I don't, I honestly don't remember the guy's name, is some guy owned a Yamaha uh, FJ powered car tire bike. And Rick was riding that and uh, I drew him first round on my little ZX6R and I put, and this was before they, changed the uh, reaction time the way they were uh, defined on the ET slip and it was because uh, 0.500 would have been a perfect light back then so it was 500 uh, so in today's speak I put a 001 green bulb on him first round with that little 600 and beat him and he came and found me <laughs> in the pits afterwards and he said man you weren't effing around on that thing <laughs> And I said, oh, you don't remember me from last year? He's like, no. I said, I was the guy on that yellow katana. He's like, oh, yeah. He said, I guess you did owe me one. <laughs> I said, yeah, except I don't get the $1,000 for that. I just got a round win, but it was it was good. Um, so we got, uh, me and my brother, uh, we, we had uh, um, really made an effort to look professional, and we had shirts and stuff like that. So we got interviewed by... Uh, American Motorcyclist magazine. I doubt, I, I know I don't have a copy of it. I wish I did, the article, but um, it was a pretty good interview. Um, I went on, uh, my brother uh, started having kids, so he kind of just 
dialed his racing back and focused on that. So, uh, and he's a good dad. So he put his priorities where they needed to be. My son, on the other hand, was already a teenager at the time. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, I went ahead and, uh, uh, started ramping up my, uh, racing program and, uh, he just faded into the background with his family which is fine that's what he needed to do um but i kept the name you know cb racing uh the 387 actually comes from when i raced motocross prior to the drag racing um because when i first started this channel i had uh gotten a few dirt bikes and was fooling around with that and uh so my district number was 387 um in district 11 in southern ohio so that's the number i chose for that um for the channel that's what that's why i use that number for the channel that would have been my old ama district number so um let's see our father um drag raced uh cars um i remember being seven years old uh sitting on the floor <laughs> in his race car while he was in a seat with a belt <laughs> taking me down the track and that was great um my dad also had a funny car back in the 70s he had several of them um one sad thing um is my dad had a lot of skill a very capable man um but he never really got to realize his dream. Um, he was a uh, combat Marine. He fought in Vietnam. And uh, one of the things I'm very proud of my dad for, um, as you guys know, a lot of vets never really got any help, especially in the Vietnam era. Um, still today, they fight. These guys that are serving today are still struggling to get the support they need from the Veterans Administration. So that's something to be mindful of, completely off topic, but it's near and dear to my heart. Um, I lost my dad 10 years ago. So <clears throat> he lost he lost his battle. Um, he basically had a double whammy of uh, being stationed at Camp Lejeune where he was being poisoned by the water. And while he was in country in Vietnam, he was exposed to uh, dioxin, which you commonly known as Agent Orange. Um, I also, my brother and sister as well, we all struggle with health issues because of his exposure. I was, I'm the oldest of three. So I was uh, conceived within a month or two of my dad returning home from Vietnam. So um, I, uh, I don't know if you guys have watched back in my videos, but uh, I had my uh, trailer broken into and my dirt bikes were stolen. Well, the reason that happened was uh, I was laid up um, with some liver issues. So I really wasn't out and about and moving around. I was pretty much laid up in bed and that happened while I was laying in bed. So um, <coughs> anyway. But my dad was so intelligent, so smart, and so methodical, and he could do things that still wow me to this day. Um, I hope to be able to share some of that uh, with you guys. And, uh, okay, I guess that's enough on the history. Let's talk about uh, where we're going forward. So, um, I'm, I did mention that uh, I bought a, uh, a turnkey turbo sportster. Wow, somebody's having target practice this morning already. Yeehaw. <laughs> um, the turbo sportster um, with a mild tune in it will run um, one of the index, the quicker index classes. Uh, I discussed the changes I'm making to the other, the original OG sportster to uh, better prepare that bike for the 1150 index and bracket racing duty. That's what that bike's gonna do. Uh, the other one, I'll have to uh, at some point uh, 
build a, a another engine for it that's capable of holding up to a lot of boost because it's the, the the tools are there but the heart uh, of that bike it still has a uh, bone stock engine on it so we won't be able to get real aggressive with it without tearing it up right away but uh, locally here where I'm at uh, I'm fairly close to uh, Piedmont Dragway and they have uh, a lot of no time races so I might try my hand in that now that's a lot of 1000 GSXRs and high boosts and stuff so I, I don't know we'll see where we're at with it if not no big deal you know um, this car sitting behind me uh, this is Misty's uh, 85 Camaro that we picked up uh, a month or two ago um, I can't say for sure right now when we're gonna actually get started on that car but I have a pretty good game plan laid out um, we're going to um, have a nine inch uh, Ford rear end uh, built for that to the length that we need. We're gonna put 28 by 10, five tires. We're gonna set it up with a ladder bar and double adjustable coilover suspension. Um, I'm gonna tie the frame in. We're gonna put an 850 uh, cage in it. Um, probably up front tubular K member we're gonna lighten this car up got the doors Lexan windows um, I think I've been studying up on it a bit uh, rock solid motorsports is a company that makes a lot of stuff for these third gen Camaros probably uh, a nose um, I don't I'm not sure what that's called where you cut half the fender wells out of it and you put a tubular uh, radiator support and all that in it tubular K member probably mentioned that already an s10 manual steering box possibly take the steering column out of the car and put an aftermarket steering column in it um, they make a uh, rear bumper ma uh, mount with a parachute mount that takes the place of all that factory stuff back there um, and I and we're gonna put a um, an LS turbocharger an LS and uh, I guess you know do some no preparation with this car now that's a long-term goal on this car obviously for the cost associated with building this car but um, it'll make uh, it'll make some good content so <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, hopefully be able to uh, document a lot of that stuff um, I do have I'm still filming right now with the iPhone but I did get a new camera. I already have a new camera. I'm waiting to get uh, a new laptop and the editing software to hopefully, um, hopefully I can just film what's going on throughout the week and then edit and, and, and upload a weekly video and bring you guys a lot better quality, uh, more entertaining. And uh, anyway, that's my game plan. Uh, for the future um, <clears throat> I am getting up there a little bit in age I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be racing motorcycles I mean I, yeah I know guys are doing it into their 70s but um, I have other uh, issues with my back and stuff that may limit that at some point uh, right now I'm doing fine um, but Anyway, those are those are uh, our goals or our future plans. One will be this car. Um, I can't help but notice um, the popularity of his, these no prep uh, small tire cars. Um, and I love racing cars as much as I do motorcycles. I just uh, the thing of it is, um, motorcycles are smaller. They take up less space. They're easier to transport. And they're actually more or less expensive rather less in, less expensive than race cars so you know my father um, rode dirt bikes but he raced cars and they're very expensive so and that's why I, I turned my racing kind of turned towards motorcycles so it was always easier for me to afford um, but uh, I think that's uh, I think that's all I got for this one, guys. Again, uh, thank you for watching. Um
Um, and I appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we look forward to having you. Thank you.